let's get started with laws of motion. The first one, first session on laws of motion. We'll start with the simplest thing, and the concept of weight and apparent weight. It, uh, let's say there are three identical masses. Let's see this mass also is M. This mass is M. And here the mass of man also is M. We have shown this in three different cases. First case, uh, it is placed in a lift and lift is having upward acceleration of E0. So mass M also will have an upward acceleration of E0 here. See, what we need to understand here, see, whenever any object of mass M is placed near the earth's surface. There's always a gravitational force acting equal to mg, which is acting towards the center of earth, which also call is towards the vertically downward direction. If in the frame of reference of earth, this object is unaccelerated, it's a zero acceleration. So net force has to be zero. So if net force has to be zero, there has to be some form of force of magnitude mg acting in the upward direction. Here, this object is placed on a horizontal surface. The surface will exert a contact force. And that contact force is called, we call normal reaction. That will be equal to mg if it is unaccelerated, and which we commonly refer to as weight. Weight is nothing but uh, force exerted by an object on a horizontal surface, or which is also equal to normal reaction exerted by the horizontal surface on the mass. So this will be equal to mg, but if object is upward acceleration, it means upward force must be greater than downward force. This force must be greater than mg. So if acceleration is downwards, it means this vertically upward force will be lesser than mg. So what is this one? So three variations, let's look at one by one. One is placed on horizontal surface, the contact was exerted by the mass on the floor is called weight. Our common understanding of weight. And many times we come across this is real weight. So, what does real weight mean when object is not accelerated in ground frame? In this particular case, this is, there's an acceleration, this is called apparent weight. And apparent in this case, very easily we can arrive at from simple application of Newton's law of motion. So, if you draw the free body diagram, this object here, apparent weight is nothing but this normal reaction here. This downward force acting mg here. And if I draw the direction of acceleration, this is the direction of A0. And typically, we take the direction of acceleration to be positive. If I write my equation, my equation in this direction will be equal to minus mg. So net force in y direction has to be mass into acceleration in y direction, which is positive, which gives you normal reaction is equal to mg plus, G plus A0. So this is something very commonly we refer. So we'll keep this in mind. So what is normal reaction? Yeah, this is value here. Now, second case here also is something similar. This object is not placed on the horizontal surface. It's connected to string and through string, as happens in case of lift. This is having upward acceleration of E0. So here, upward force was uh, exerted by normal reaction here. Here, the similar up net upward force is exerted by the tension in the string. But if this accelerations are equal, if masses are equal, so whatever normal force is acting here, this has to act in form of a tension. So tension in the string also will be equal to mg plus a naught with sine. And what will happen here? If uh, the direction of acceleration is downwards, of course, tension becomes smaller, mg minus a naught. Third case, here the, uh, the, here the rope was pulling it up. Third case, what we come across, the rope is, say, like fixed or ceiling or somewhere. The rope is not in motion, but a man can hold the rope and with the rope, he can have upward motion. If you have upward motion with the constant velocity, that's zero acceleration. We are talking about he's moving, he's moving upward with the increasing speed. He has upward acceleration of A0. If he has upward acceleration, this case also, there has to be net force acting. The only object which is applying force since the man is in contact with the rope only, the rope only has to apply upward force equal to, again, since mass is same, acceleration is same, this force applied by the rope on the man also, again, has to be equal to m, g plus a naught, both within bracket. And uh, since that rope is applying that force on the man, it means man also is exerting a downward flow force equal to mg plus a naught. 
So these are the common things we'll keep in mind because many questions we can use it. It makes a solution for the past. If man is climbing acceleration, that's also a similar case. And what happens if man is sliding downwards? If the acceleration is downwards, the force become less. And you notice here, if you can imagine, see what will happen, you have to slide down a rope. If you have to slide down, if you if you hold this rope very lightly, perhaps if you'll have rope will exert very little force. You are exerting very little force on the rope. In that case, you uh, slide downward in acceleration of g. In that case, rope also will not apply any force. You will not, not apply any force. But if you want to go down this uh, rope with a lower acceleration, you know you have to tighten your grip on the rope. As you tighten the grip on the rope. Uh, we exert greater force. The friction force also will start acting and the force will become greater. So lower the acceleration is if you slide down with high acceleration equal to G, no tension, it will become zero. If you slide down with an acceleration of G by two, downward acceleration of G by two, the tension in the rope will be half the tension it would exert in case you are just holding the rope and you are having zero acceleration. So we understand hopefully this part of it. Now, a few more things about, uh, see, there are things we need to understand for free body diagram, simple question. And another thing we need to understand is about contact forces. Okay, unless we understand contact forces, drawing free body diagram and understanding of laws of motion becomes a little complicated. So this is a common case. So we have two objects which are in contact with each other. There's a small gap, is, is they are in contact. And we know if we apply a force here, we are exerting, just imagine these two blocks are lying on a smooth surface. They are two cartons kind of thing. And you touch this box here, moment you touch it with hand, there's a contact here. And you push through this contact here, you are exerting force on this block A. But what will happen as you apply a force here, if the surface is smooth, this block will start moving and actually B also will start getting accelerated. Both will have acceleration. What is making B to accelerate? It is the contact exerted by A on B. So second thing, when we talk about contact forces, contact forces between smooth surfaces. Here the contact surface is vertical, so contact forces will be horizontal, perpendicular. Similar to this block and this surface here, the surface is horizontal, contact forces will be vertical. So contact forces on smooth surfaces are along the common normal. Common normal is the right term if the surface is curved also, we can draw a normal, it will act along the normal. And in the case of surfaces, forces are pushing in nature. What does pushing mean? So which direction, the, uh, if we hold, keep it like this, if we apply a force on A, we can push block B. But by applying a force on A, can we pull the block B? Can we make the block move towards the left? That we can't do. Because uh, the contact between A and B can only apply a force which is like this. What do we understand by pushing force? Force at the point of contact is directed into the object. That's a pushing force. Pushing force is into. Just contrast it with the rope. Suppose we take a string, we tie this carton with a string here, and to a string here, we uh, apply a pulling force here on the string. We pull by some force F here. In that case, the box is getting moved in this direction. We are pulling the box. What does pulling mean? If we exert, so this rope is in contact with the block B at this point. So there's a, at this contact point, the rope is exerting force. And rope always string exerts a force along with the direction of the string. If we hold the string horizontal, this force also will be horizontal. If the rope was making an angle theta with the horizontal, the Contact force also will make an angle theta. It acts along the world, but it is odd, always a pulling kind of force. Let's look at the contact point. How do we draw the arrow? Now the arrow is not into the body, it is away from the body. So that's a pulling force. Third thing, what we understand in case of a spring, suppose there's a block here and there's a spring here. In a spring property, we know something called unelongated length. If a string is in a relaxed state or unelongated state, it doesn't exert any force. But uh, uh, if I compress the spring, if the spring gets compressed, if it compressed means what? You need to push, suppose we this end, we push this direction. So if this end is given a displacement towards right, it gets compressed, it will exert a force in the opposite direction. So if the spring is compressed, it will, uh, it will try to expand. So here also, it will try to, 
expand if it is compressed it will exert a force like this and this point of the spring will exert a force like this so when we the spring is compressed it is exerting a pushing force on the block but same way if we elongate the spring it will exert a pulling force so it spring can exert a force in either direction and force will act along the spring and magnitude for force is we know is may be spring constant into displacement from the mean position so now let's look at some question which are based on in it's related to see uh, we can express newton's law of motion force is equal to rate of change of momentum and uh, when we write force is equal to rate of change of momentum we write something like this force is equal to dp by dt and both are vectors this is what rate of change of momentum is and if in a steady state if uh, we have to call average force here what is average force you have to calculate average force is equal to change in momentum divided by time and same thing could have been written what is the impulse in a very small duration of time impulse acts along the direction of force and is the impulse produces change in momentum so this is impulse producing change in momentum so let's understand some question based on this simple application of force is equal to rate of change of momentum and this is something what we commonly come across a ball of mass m moving the velocity u rebounds from a ball the collision is supposed to be elastic it rebounds with the same speed okay and force of interaction between ball and wall varies as shown in the figure what it shows before t is equal to 0 there is no force it acts and beyond t also the force becomes zero cuz this force will act only for the duration ball is in contact so this shows the ball is in contact for time period t and during the speed you also as soon as the ball comes in contact force is zero it increases linearly with time because maximum it decreases linearly with time and you know uh, whenever the uh, ball hits a wall or ball hits a uh, bat here some kind of deformation is taking place the ball which is spherical in shape just to try to understand that part if you take a spherical ball you put it on the floor and take a flat surface and you see what happens if you apply a small force it will get deformed slightly and if you apply greater force it gets deformed more so what is happening here as the ball hits the wall as it is getting more and more deformed force is increasing it becomes maximum where the deformation maximum and then because of elastic property it tries to regain its shape and then force also decreases this is the time for which it is in contact with the wall and there is a maximum value of force so the force is varying this maximum value so what we need to calculate if we know at what speed the ball has hit the wall and if it has rebound with the same speed then is elastic collision and if we know the time if we assume uh, if we know the time of contact time of contact is t and if we assume during the time of contact it increases linearly at certain rate and decreases linearly at the same rate that's why it is at what is the maximum force you can word this question in several ways So let's understand this question also is based on impulse is equal to change in momentum. Let's just quickly solve this one. Compulse in the other impulse is equal to change in momentum, and realistically also the force will increase to maximum and then decrease during period of contact. Though it may be linear, it may be non-linear. Sometimes we show some some cases show it like this one. The force may have some non-linear variation, but all cases impulse will be equal to area under F T curve. We have done that one. If we write y dx, y dx is area under y y uh, uh, area under the curve and the x-axis. In case of y here is this force here. In place of x, there is a t here. So in place of y dt becomes f dt. F dt is called impulse. Impulse is nothing but area under f t curve. Okay. So let's look at what is impulse. That's a if force is not constant. That's understanding of impulse. That's what we're talking about. Area under f t curve, which is equal to one by two f naught. Not this is a half the height into base. That's the area under curve. That's impulse. That will be equal to change in momentum. So if the ball magnitude of momentum only we are talking about, the ball is something like this. Ball comes. It has a it has velocity u. Since there is no information about the uh, angle at which ball strikes the wall, whatever such thing is missing, we assume it is striking the wall in a normal fashion. And it rebounds in the same direction. So initial momentum, since the direction reverses, change in momentum is two mu. So uh, we equate change in momentum to impulse. We find F naught. That's the value of maximum force which will act 
during the period when the ball is in contact with the wall. For what duration will the maximum force will act? Maximum force will act only momentarily. Extremely brief period of time, infinitely small period of time. Another question which is common is uh, something like water jet. We all understand uh, if, if there's a kind of water jet and uh, it's a water jet you come across in case of hose pipe, which you use for gardening purpose. And you just try and hold, if you try and hold a plate against the water jet here, depending on how the flow is, it needs certain force to hold the plate. But what happens in this particular case, let's see this, water, the flat plate moves normally the speed V1. So this is flat plate here, and it is moving normally means it is moving directly towards the direction of water jet. It is moving to velocity V1. It's a horizontal jet of water, and it has a cross-section area of A. The cross-section area is A. And uh, this water is spouting out, water discharges rate. Uh, okay, water comes out, okay. Rate of V per second. So, uh, okay, so I'll change this question slightly, not this one, water discharges. Cross section area is A, and it comes out with the velocity V2. Water is, water is flowing at a velocity V2 from this jet here. Now, assume the water, it, after splashing, it's very common we find after it hits the plate, it, is, it will just move uh, along the plate. It will flow out along the plate. So if you are looking from the top, something in the right side, something to lower side, something will go up and down. Okay, so and it will assume, we are assuming that it just moves along the plate. So what is the magnitude of force acting on the plate due to the jet of water? That's what we need to calculate. Okay, so in this question also, in this similar question, we would have done it in case of several bullets hitting the plate and all those kind of things. So in this question also, concept involved is so we can calculate for a brief period of time. See, unlike a ball striking a surface, Ball is a discrete mass. So mass is well defined. It is a continuous stream of water jet coming. So there's no discrete mass. It's not as something. To, what is the mass of water that is striking? It is continuously flowing. The only thing we have to define some time interval. Then only can say what is the mass or what is the volume of water which is striking the plate. So unless we take a time interval, um, whenever there's a continuous flow, it is not clear about what is the mass we are talking about. So here also we'll calculate if we choose this x direction. So momentum is changing along x direction. Force also required to exert it in x direction. So we'll calculate change in momentum in x direction, and that change in momentum will be equal to impulse. And when we impulse, divide impulse by time, we'll get the force. That's a scheme to solve this question. So let's say in time delta t, so initial momentum, since the velocity is v2, the momentum of a Every single liquid particle is moving at velocity v2. So momentum will be equal to what is the delta m represents the mass which is striking the plate in time delta t. So what is the mass which will strike the plate in time delta t? So every liquid particle is uh, moving. So you understand here the particles which are nearer to the plate will strike. But how much nearer? What are we talking about? So every single particle since the plate, Water particle is moving velocity v2, v2 and plate is moving at the velocity v1. It means uh, from the plate perspective or from the frame of reference of the plate, water molecules are approaching with the velocity of v1 plus v2. So in time delta t, all those water molecules which are within a distance of velocity of approach into time, within a distance of v1 plus v2 into delta t, all those particles will come and strike. So if I draw a distance, this is the volume of water it will come and strike. If we multiply by density, we'll be get the dm. What is the volume here? Volume will be this length into cross section into density will be dm. So density into volume. Volume is cross section area into length. That is v1 plus v2 into delta t. So this becomes length part. This becomes multiplied by a volume. To row, that's a mass which is striking in time delta t. So dm, this whole thing is delta m multiplied by v. That's a uh, initial momentum. Now we come to final momentum. That too, it is. It has velocity in y direction also, but we are not concerned. Since it is moving along the plate, is splashing the water. Its velocity in x direction is same as velocity of the uh, uh, plate here. 
and x component of velocity this v1 so all liquid molecules work so same whatever mass is struck same volume only is, uh, this delta m also is same delta m will remain same only thing you need to look at water volume of water which is struck here now it is moving in a perpendicular direction so what direction what will be allowed delta m will remain same but their velocity will be v1 but v1 in which direction sorry i am not this one it should be in the opposite direction if i take dipole positive so delta m now is x comma velocity v1 is the same as peak velocity so we substitute this value this is delta m delta m will remain same density into volume volume is the same thing into v1 so what is change in moment so change in momentum so we change of subtract final momentum from here we subtract initial momentum Okay, when we subtract the initial momentum, actually because sine both will add up. So when we add it up, this come common again. We get one of v one plus v two terms, so it becomes this the value of expression of change in momentum. And this happens in time t. So what is the force on the water jet? We divide the momentum by time. That becomes the average force. And in this case, force is constant with time. Average force is equal to instantaneous force. So uh, and if v one was zero. it becomes lot easier in that case force becomes equal to rho a v square that's the force due to water jet coming at velocity v and if this is relative velocity and over there could be other variations of the question other variation of question could be the plate rather being a flat plate it could be is is a plate at rest but it is in form of a spherical semi hemispherical shell if it is hemispherical shell again we assume no loss of energy in that case what will happen water will after after hitting this bit here which is the hemispherical in shape water will come out with the this direction velocity even if this this is at rest and when uh, sometime we give the velocity this no loss of energy if this is v1 this also will come back the same velocity v1 so change in velocity will be a change in momentum will be again v2 also v1 v2 may become equal if it is a hemispherical shape bit at rest and water flows out along the tangential direction with the same velocity so once we understand there can be several variations another really interesting question is uh, conveyor belt so uh, is a conveyor belt is moving with velocity v and sand is dropped on the belt from a hopper at a rate of alpha kg per second calculate what is the extra force needed to applied on the conveyor belt to keep it moving in the constant velocity so conveyor belt how do you visualize the conveyor belt and a similar question could be a, something is a, any flat platform suppose we take a flat kind of platform kind of thing which is similar to conveyor belt and let's see it is kept on the rollers suppose this are absolutely negligible friction so if this conveyor this flat belt or it could be a railway wagon it could be conveyor belt it is moving with velocity v okay see typically what we understand any object which will it will keep moving the constant velocity no force is required but uh, what does our uh, newton law say force is required to change the momentum the force is equal to rate of change of momentum and the rate of change of momentum is the system so in this case what you saying the velocity is not changing velocity is not changing but uh, the mass which is moving with velocity v is increasing So actually, if when we write m, this could have been written as m into dv by dt. Some of you recall, you might have done this one. Plus v into dm by dt. In this case, this term is not changing. What is changing? Mass is getting added, which is keep moving the same velocity. So earlier, so there was some sand here. So there is some kind of a hopper. So hopper is at rest. It is filled with sand. And sand is falling. And what rate is any every second alpha alpha kg of sand is getting added. so as the mass increases increasing it means momentum is increasing because of increase in mass not because of change in velocity so one dimensional motion velocity direction part we are not coming to so for change in momentum in unidirectional motion either magnitude of velocity has to change or mass has to be changed so this one is an example of variable mass system where the mass of the system is changing what is the system here let's start with this mass of system we talk about conveyor belt plus sand So conveyor belt volume mass being same, the sand mass is keep increasing while velocity remains constant. So uh, as the mass keeps increasing, momentum keeps increasing. If momentum is increasing, then it needs a force. So let's say at time t, mass of the whole system. There is some sand here. This is scenario at time t. 
mass of the whole system is m and hence momentum is mv after time delta t since it is adding this much extra mass sand is being dumped and not only sand is being dumped what we assume here because of enough friction the slam sand is not sliding on the platform so it does happen for very brief period of time we have to assume the surface is rough and whatever sand we dump on this platform here we assume it is rough and then this sand also start moving with the same velocity as the conveyor belt velocity so the extra mass which has been added here in time delta t extra sand which has been dumped in time delta t this also because of friction we start moving the same velocity as the velocity of the conveyor belt so that's why the whole momentum becomes this this is the moment so now it is easy change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum so only this term is extra alpha v into delta t this is the time delta t so rate of change of momentum is the force that's of alpha into v so this is the whenever the momentum changes you can say the force is equal to v into dm by dt okay now we'll come to some question on equilibrium very simple question so something like this and you know some means really the question which have come on the topic of laws of motion have been very easy ones some this kind of similar question had come uh, some time back so let's see so um, there's a red color is kind of string and a 10 kg mass is suspended let's say by string either we can we can apply some horizontal force number of ways we can apply the force one way of applying the force is let's imagine you you take a horizontal rod and push it like this or you can even in, from here also you can take a thin string and pull it like this so in this case we apply an horizontal force somewhere on the rope and magnitude of those force is 90 newton the question is if you apply a force what is the angle this part of the thread will make with the vertical We have to find this angle theta. The angle with the rope makes with the vertical in equilibrium. And uh, uh, intuitively, we can all think: if we really have a string here, if we apply lesser force, what will happen? This angle becomes smaller. As we keep increasing the force, angle keeps on increasing. So the question is: okay, this is pretty simple application of laws of motion. But whenever we we have to be careful. The example I have taken up so that we understand the basics of how we apply laws of motion. When we apply laws of motion, we need to define which object we apply laws of motion, which is called as a system. So we need to choose a system. Which force between two parts string? The first thing, uh, this question also becomes: There is a two parts of the string. There is one part of the string here, and this part of the string. Will the tension in the string be equal? See, from between, if I call this point as A, and this point as B, and this point as C. See, between A and B, no other force is acting. Even no other force is acting if it is ideal string. Anywhere on the string, any point between A and B, if I check what the tension is, tension will be same. If no force is acting, but if I look at point here and point here, now in between some force is acting. The tension in part of the string B C will not be same as the tension in part A B when any force acts in between or another mass is connected. So the tensions are not equal. So we will not write P T here. We they have two tensions are different. No, so forces are not equal. now we have to, what do we choose as a system it's many times we think that a point can be chosen system point is not appropriate a point is massless so when we apply mass we have to choose something little more than a point okay so this something we choose a small area so when this is the how we define the boundary what do you see here circle so this part of the string this mass here this mass here and this string mass is string this is whatever is coming in the boundary is my system If this is my system, wherever it is contact something else, that becomes external force, contact force. So if this is my system, it has a, uh, it will have its weight. Since I have taken a very small, the mass will be negligible. So compared to other forces, the weight of this string will be negligible, even if the string has some mass. Anyway, the string is ideal string, so it means mass is negligible compared to other forces. So only forces acting will be contact force so here. the contact force because of the string the string always exerts a pulling force the force will be away the pulling force always directed away from the contact surface and let's call this an and similar way there also is a contact force here and there is a contact force 98 newton is already given the question is uh, if i call this for this so this is this system here so three contact forces equilibrium condition what is equilibrium condition this is my system so if i choose equilibrium condition uh, typically what we do we take x axis and y axis 
in the components along those axes equal to zero in equilibrium. So if I take this components here, so this this force and this force already along x and y direction. Only thing you have to take component of this. So let me call this tension is P. So in this case, if I take this component, this component becomes P cos theta. This free body diagram, this becomes T cos theta. This other component uh, along x-axis, negative x direction, it becomes T sin theta. This is 98. And what is the downward force? This also actually, uh, whatever tension which is acting here, we can calculate this tension by taking the, this as a free body. We, we, we have done it earlier also. Since this mass is not accelerated, what is the force acting? Tension is equal to uh, mean 2g. So 10 into 9.8. Whenever 98 is given, it implies g is equal to 9.8. So this is also 98 Newton. So this downward force also is 98. Once we have here, t sin theta is equal to 98, t cos theta is equal to 98. So what is 10 theta? Divide first equation by second equation, 10 theta comes to 1, or theta is equal to 45 degree. That's one way we can arrive at. The second thing we can say, this is 98, and this force is 98. Resultant of these two forces will be along the bisector. It will make an angle of 45 degrees the vertical. And resultant of these two, the third force here has to be equal and opposite. So this force also will have to make an angle of 45 degrees. So any which way we can work it out. So this is a fairly simple question. Okay, three contact forces are equal in 45 degrees. Okay, this question is a little tricky and a little different from the rest of other questions. So the flexible chain. So this is a easy, typically when you take a string, we take it massless, but we know if it's a chain, and you might have seen if you take a metal chain, and uh, say sometimes even if you see in the traffic signal and all, also there are two posts, and within the post our chain is hanging. So we fix one end here, another end here. You always notice it, it always sags in the middle. It takes a shape like this, and this shape is called a catenary. Okay, so whenever uniform mass a rope is suspended, it takes a shape. And in this case also, is that, see, why does it take a particular shape? So if I take a particular place here, so if I draw a tangent here, so uh, the tension will always act along the tangent. That's why it takes a particular shape and a tangent, the tension will not be constant here. So, ten, I mean, so as, as we go on, whatever tension acts here, different tension, different tension, because there's a weight also acting in between, unlike a string. In string, what happens between two points, there's no weight also, no other force. Hence, the tension remains constant. Here, tension will not remain constant. So different point, different tension. So what we need to we only know weight. And when we suspend, what we can do? So if we're at the point of support, if we draw a tangent, we find this tangent drawn at the point of support makes an angle theta. So, which means at this particular point, uh, uh, the chain will exert, will exert a pulling force. So, it will try to pull the support in this direction, in the tangential direction. Or we can say the support A is exerting an opposite force in that direction. So what is the direction? Let's say mark the force exerted by the support A on the string. Support A will exert a force like this and it acts at angle theta. And this support also will exert a force uh, T and which also will act an angle theta here. So what we need to do here, and uh, it will have tension different points also. So if I take this point also, here also some tension, and let's call this is here the middle. This is tension at the support. How do I find tension? And I have to find answer in terms of W and theta. I have not written options here if options are given. So I need to make use of both the information. How do you make use of information? See, only thing which is in our control when we apply laws of motion is choice of system. What should be taken as the object to which we apply laws of motion? See, what we notice here, if I take the whole chain as a system, the equation will involve T and theta. If I check only half the chain in system, then only if I take half the chain, the tension will come into so first thing what I need to do here, in this case, since I need to use theta here, I will take the whole chain as a system. So contact force at any point of chain is along the tangent. That's the point we have to be clear. Anywhere tangent is along the tangent. Because if the force is not along the tangent, what would happen? It just, just you know that, whether see if, if a string is there, what happens if a string is there, you apply a force anywhere. When you apply a force, the string, it, be, it becomes like kink. Is it not? When you apply a force in the kink, there's a sudden change in slope at that point. 
Here there's no sudden change because this is something so force is always acting in the tangential direction. Any uh, if there's any perpendicular component that will create a peak which is not there. Okay, so no perpendicular component tension is acting along the it is along the chain. What is taking system? First we take entire chain is system and we equate the forces acting in the y direction. If I draw free body diagram, the free body diagram will be this tension T at angle theta. This side also tension T at angle theta. Whole chain is represented as a point here and a weight due to gravity will act. Okay. And the whole thing is in equilibrium. Summation of force in y direction is zero. T sine theta is equal to W. I get the value of tension here. First part, if I take the whole chain, I get the tension in form of theta and W, which are the two known values. Now, since I have to find tension at this point, we need to take a system which has a boundary passing through this point. Then only this force here becomes external force. It figures into my equation. So what do I take a system now? I take this one half of the chain. You can take left half or right half. So if I take that part of the system in chain, so it has its weight. Now we have the weight also only part of chain which is our, which is part of the system. And the contact force here at midpoint, since the chain is horizontal, the contact force will act in a tangential direction. In this direction, in which the tension force will act plane. from the point of contact away from the object. It's a plane force. This is where the contact surface is. So any contact force due to chain the plane force, it is away from the body. So if we draw the free ball diagram, what is the free ball diagram of the left half? Left half will have uh, tension acting like this. Yeah. Tension at the midpoint, this tension is not same as this. As I mentioned earlier, everywhere the tension will keep on changing. And this is a uh, tension at the end, which is acting at an angle, theta with the horizontal. We know this value of T. Okay. And what is the field force? which is not because of the contact, it's because of gravitational pull. Since we have taken half the chain, it will be acting on this part, W by two. And the free body diagram, if I find I now define T, and we know this T already, from this equation, taking force in X direction is zero. This becomes equal to, if we take its component, this becomes T cos theta. So T cos theta is equal to TM, that's what we write. And TM is equal to uh, T cos theta. And we value of T, we can find the tension at the midpoint. Okay, the three blocks of mass energy, they are placed on the smooth surface, find acceleration of system, and normal forces, contact force and all. So this example, again, we have, I have taken up to, again, refresh our understanding of what should be taken as a system, and how do we use, this is also in a simplest example of constraint motion. And then before we go to little more complex things, what is the constraint we have here? So when you apply a force here, all three objects are constrained to move with the same acceleration. The simplest form of constraint, yet yeah, it is a constraint. So all three systems together. So since all three have same acceleration, they will always undergo same displacement, same acceleration. It is possible to take either the entire thing as a system, any part of his system, both will have same acceleration. That's what it means. First, all such cases, what we do, we find the acceleration of whole system which becomes equal of acceleration of any part of the system. What is system acceleration? If you take the whole thing, if you take the whole thing, we are just concerned only about motion in the X direction. Y direction will cancel out each other. We are ignoring, we are not writing. So what are forces acting if we take the whole thing as a system? 120 positive, 50 negative. Net force is 70, mass is 7. It gives you acceleration is equal to 10 meter per second. So net force on each block. So once you understand this block also will have acceleration, this also will have 10, this also will have so net force is always equal to mass into acceleration. Net force on this block, net force will be equal to uh, acceleration is 10. This will be 10 Newton on this block, net force. On this block, net force will be equal to 40 Newton. And this block, net force will be equal to 20 Newton. So if for this, just think of it. And we have applied force here. Okay, so uh, if I take each block separately, then if I calculate, net force should come to these values. Or we can equate to acceleration. So each block is system. Suppose I take each block as a system. Moment I take one kg block as my system, it is in contact with four kg. I have to replace this contact with the contact. First we identify it is in contact with the bottom surface. Vertical force. It will exert vertical force, which you are ignoring here. There's a normal reaction. There's one contact, and there's F one. 
force on one due to block four, four kg block. And there'll be on this block equal and opposite. So contact force exist in pair. So these are how the contact forces will look like. And uh, when now we can uh, everywhere acceleration is equal to sorry, acceleration is equal to 10. If we take this as positive, every block we apply, suppose I want to calculate kind of what is the normal force between one kg and four kg block. If I want to find what kg four will be really work, I can I have to choose a system where this surface is a boundary. So I want force at this boundary. So what are the ways I can choose system? I can change one kg as system. I can take this 4 kg as a system in that case, but if I take 4 kg, it becomes two boundaries. I need to know the force here. So 1 kg, no problem. Or I can take 4 kg and 2 kg together as a system. In that case also, what will happen? This boundary is part of internal system. So there's one force here. And another force here. So you should understand, depending on what we need to find, if I need contact force at this surface, I need to choose a system for which this surface is a boundary. So if I take this one, suppose I've taken 1 kg, uh, in this case here, acceleration net force has equal to 10 in right direction. Or all forces, which direction? Which direction. This acting 120 is acting. I need net force of 10. It means this force has to be equal to 110. This only net force becomes 10. So this also becomes 110. And net force has to be acting 40 in the right direction. This is 110. Net force has to 40, but this has to be 70. And this is 70. So this also 70. So 70 minus 50, this is having net force 20. So these are the contact forces, right? Now, uh, let's understand here. And this kind of question also, there are some question where it is connected to string, which is massless. Let's take up, it's not massless. A block is being pulled by uniform chain of mass M tied to it by applying force F. And here also, this, um, yes, this question is theoretically not uh, exact because any mass, if it is hanging here, we can always think of this mass is supported ideally this rope and chain if it is a chain it should be supported on a smooth surface otherwise it will sag okay let's assume it is supported on a smooth surface and we are applying a force f here what is the tension at a distance of quarter of the length of the chain the total length is l and it's a uniform chain so mass is proportional to length so let's say you can see in a very simple way also uh, we saw uh, what we saw. So again, similar to this, first what we do, whole thing together as a system. This whole system moves together. If I take whole thing together, it will have certain acceleration. And any part, if we take also, that also has to have the same acceleration. We take whole thing as a system, force is external force F, mass is 2M, acceleration becomes equal to F by 2M. Okay. And then any part of the system will have same acceleration. If I choose, what is the system? If I want tension at this part here, so it means I have to choose a system for which boundary passes through section X. What could we choose as a system? I can choose this as a system or anything like this. If I choose something like this, it doesn't make sense because I'll have one more unknown here. So I can take either left part of the system or the right part of the system, either right of X or left of X. Any of the two will give me a result. So I've taken right part of the system, the mass of the system, length is one fourth, mass becomes n by four. The contact force is a, a whatever object. It is, is connected to the string, always a pin force, this external force. This is how the free body diagram will look like. Let's see what the free body diagram, ideally this free body diagram, we represent the object with a point, the point mass, because all, of, all points, all particles will have same motion. So why to differentiate? We can just put a point, forces acting here. Uh, along the company. Here we are concerned only in x direction. I have indicated the which direction do I take as positive. Since we know the acceleration is in direction, typically we should take direction to be positive. Along the direction of acceleration, if acceleration is known. So this is a figure we write here, and we may very easily form the equation. Summation of force in x direction is equal to mass into acceleration. So F positive, e negative, is equal to mass, which is m by 4, into acceleration, which is F by 2M. So this gives me a value of tension, which will equal to 7F by 8. Another way also we could have understood, if this F, net force F is acting on mass 2M. Now, if I look at this part here, this part also, if I take this remaining part here, remaining part also, this tension T is acting. Here, but this T is giving same acceleration to the entire mass, 
as F was giving to this entire mass. So what I mean, the expression is same, the force has to be proportional to the mass. Here mass was 2m, here the mass has become, how much is this mass here? This P by F ratio will be same as this mass by total mass ratio. That's another way we can add it. Okay. okay. So what we understood here, so this is something we arrived at tension. See here, this what happens if uh, m tends to zero? This mass tends to zero. In that case, what will happen? Just notice that one. What will happen if we this force is if mass is tending to zero? This mass also will tend to zero. This mass also will be zero. If mass is zero. Mass is close to zero. What does it mean? Because this acceleration, the force required also is negligible. So what is negligible force in the right direction means? Negligible force means this F will be marginally higher than tension. Our tension will always be equal to F, which implies everywhere tension will be same as F if the mass is zero. So that's the reason this is the logic behind why the tension is constant in a string which is massless. You can understand from this question also. Okay, we are done with this question. Yeah. Let's look at one. This also is a kind of, a, there are many questions on platform and man putting and all. Let's see a very easy way how to solve such question. See, uh, in this case, first thing you need to look at wherever a string is involved, how many strings are involved here? See, we there are actually three strings involved. See, one is this is string here, we'll mark in red. This is string up to here. This is one string. And the string has a property, if it's running over a smooth surface, no other force is acting, tension is constant. So if uh, the tension here is P, this part also T, and this part also is P. Everywhere the tension will be T. This is one string. Do we see other strings also? Let's mark which are the other strings here. This is the second string. And where's the third string? And actually that third string also is going to be very, very useful in solving this question. This is the third string which is connecting three to the top this is the third string. Okay, so let's say this tension is a third string. So our tension is T. Now, where does this tension comes from? This tension is whatever force, whatever force man applies on the rope in the downward direction, same force rope lies on the man in the upward direction, which is nothing but tension. So tension in the string, which man is pulling, is equal to force applied by the man. So this T is equal to force applied by the man. This is the case. So man is applying a force T. And man will apply force, it will pull downwards and the string will pull him upwards. So that, yeah, which is the property of this. We cannot apply force in the upward direction. Okay, so this is a tension T. So what we need to calculate, this is we have to calculate what is this value of T so that form and man all together stay in a state of equilibrium. So what we'll do here, steps, and let's just pay attention. Those are the easiest steps to solve. Whenever pulleys are involved, ideal pulley, it has a property, if in case of ideal pulley, massless pulley, the net force acting on the pulley has to be zero. If I take this particular pulley here, there are three strings here, all are having tension force, the three T acting downward. And if I take uh, this tension as P dash, it is acting in the upward direction. Since net force is zero, the tension in the yellow color string has to be equal to 3T. So this tension here is equal to three times the force applied by the man. So this is based on the free body diagram or this is based on the equilibrium of the pulley. Force on the string connected to the ceiling is 3T. Based on equilibrium of P. So, the thing now, which is the second system I should choose so that I get my answer? I should always choose a system which includes all the relevant information. What are things I need? See, now, I actually have to find P, but if I can find P dash also, I can find P. So this becomes also a known parameter. I need to find, so Mike, rather than finding P now, I want, I'm now interested in finding P dash. But T dash, you see, it is easier to find. How do I find T dash? I have to take a section which passes through the, which cuts across this string here. The strong is this uh, constraint of this rope here. So, and it should impose a mass, known mass. So, if I take this whole thing as a system, it imposes known values, it also imposes known value t dash and a state of equilibrium. Now, it becomes very simple. So, if we consider this as a system, uh, 
uh, which I'll show in this. That's the boundary of the system shown in the dotted line. So this is the only contact force. Rest all is field force. That's only contact force, upward direction. If you draw the free body diagram, it's very simple. Upward force is 3T. Downward force is equal to weight. Weight is equal to mg. So 90 into 10. 900 is equal to 3T. Which gives you V value P is equal to 300 Newton. And up, uh, so force man need to exert on the rope is 300 Newton. And sometimes you can check also certain things. Can a moon really exert a force of 300 Newton? Its weight is 500. So any rope is there, just understand this part also. If a rope is there, if a rope is there, uh, just imagine there's a rope here and hang from the ceiling. You go and stand next to the rope here. You, if, uh, uh, when you stand here, you know, uh, there's some normal reaction exerted by the ground, and you push the ground down with the downward force equal to weight. Moment you apply a downward force on the rope, what will happen? Whatever force you apply in the rope, by same force, the reaction will decrease. So what is the maximum force you can apply in the rope without uh, really climbing up with an acceleration? Maximum force, if your, you are, your mass is 50 kg, and you apply a force greater than 500 Newton, so whatever moment you apply a force of 500 Newton, what will happen? You will lose contact with the ground. So as you keep increasing force, normal reaction keeps decreasing. Moment you apply a downward force of 900 Newton, your weight is being supported by the downward force what you apply on the rope. So moment you apply 500, you lose contact with the ground. More than 500 Newton, you cannot apply. So here also, yes, this force comes to 300, which is less than 500, which is possible. So since it's applying, so if I take free body diagram of the man here, what is the free body diagram? There's a tension force acting on the rope, which he himself has created. You cannot blame anybody. Of course, whatever he has done, whatever force he has applied a force of 300 Newton downwards on the rope, rope will resist his motion. He'll apply a force 300 Newton upwards on the man. That's the force acting. Its weight is acting equal to 500 Newton in GF90. This is a normal reaction. And this person in state of equilibrium, what is the normal reaction? Normal reaction is equal to 200 Newton. If this normal reaction was required, what is the normal reaction man is exerting on the floor? Yes, we could have calculated that as well. And this force, so this force answer could not have been greater than 500. If answer comes greater than 500, it means the man has to accelerate upwards. Then only it will stay in a uh, equilibrium. The formula is equilibrium. This is a very unique type of question. Okay, it's a question, it's a common one, but uh, I will solve in a very unique way. And all of you just try and understand. And this uh, unique way is applicable for a particular case. And many, this kind of case is very common. Quite a few questions are similar to condition what we come across here. It's the first thing what we check, see in this case, there are three objects here. Do they have same acceleration? They don't have same acceleration. We know this will end, tend to move with the downward acceleration A here. But very easily what we can understand without going into constraint motion, we'll go to constraint motion later. Without that also we can understand if uh, this moves down with acceleration A, this also will move right with the acceleration A, and this will move with the acceleration A. The entire system will move along this path kind of thing. So whenever we find the objects are connected by a single rope kind of thing running through, all three have same magnitude. We can, in this case, if it, what is the acceleration? How do we calculate here? Calculation and acceleration requires three equations. We have to write equation for this mass here. We have to write equation for this mass here. We have to write equation for this mass. And because there are three unknowns, one is unknown. It is an unknown, acceleration is unknown. And we solve this equation to arrive at the solution. We can make it a little simpler. How we make it simpler? See, this is case, uh, what we understand from here, this is the direction in which the motion is taking place. What we do, the direction is not a straight line. But what we can do, we can almost think like a straight line. And in that case, solution becomes same because what happens, if we take the same forces. The magnitude is equal. And when you form the equations, what you have done, this part also we have straightened. And when you straighten, what is the component of forces we have taken? Component of forces also along the line of motion. 
So what are the force acting here? Suppose here the force acting downwards was 10 Newton. So when I straightened also the 10 Newton also, where the 10 Newton is gone? This is the direction of motion. 10 Newton is acting along opposite line of motion. So this is the line of motion. This is the direction of acceleration. I applied 10 Newton like this. You understand? There's a T1 here. There's a T1 here. This is T2. This is T2. And you know, where has 60 Newton gone? The 60 Newton is acting in the uh, vertical direction. Normal force also is acting in the vertical direction. They do not have component along the red line. Red line is the line of motion. Here also, this is component along the red line. So red line indicates line of motion. We should visualize what that means. And then we straighten. This becomes the whole thing. This becomes like a, all objects are placed in a line. What we have done by straightening it out, not only magnitude was already equal, we have taken the direction also same. And if we take a system, now it becomes very easy. So whenever such thing is there, now it is simple, we can take as a system. As in this case, magnitude of acceleration is all three as a mass, it becomes 10 kg, net force is equal to 20 Newton, 20 divided by 2, acceleration becomes 2 meter per second square. And you calculate three equation also, we come to the same solution with a lot more delay. Okay, now come to next part. What is T1, T2? Suppose we have to calculate T1, T2 also. How do we calculate? We have already arrived at something. What we have arrived at? We arrived at A value, which is two. This also is two. Acceleration is two meter per second square. I'm just writing the magnitude and direction. This also is two. We have to calculate tension T1 here. You know, I can use my formula. Tension is equal to M into G plus A naught. It is upward. It will be equal to, uh, so that's what is T1 equal to? M into G plus A. M plus 2, 12, 12 into M. This is 12 Newton. So T1 is equal to 10, 12 Newton. Similar way I applied here, T2. Again, similar way, vertical direction. What is the tension in this thing? It's equal to MG plus A. In this case, acceleration is downwards. So I'll put A value is negative. It will become T minus 2. So 8 into 3, 24 Newton. You get T2 value also very quickly. And uh, since if I have to calculate tension here at a distance L by 4, if I consider it as a uniform rod, what is the tension here? Calculate tension here. I need to choose a system for which this section is a boundary. What is the system I can choose? I can choose this as a system. If I choose a system and this is the boundary of my system, wherever anything touches the boundary is a contact force. And I only am concerned about horizontal direction. So I'm vertical, I'm ignoring. So here T1 is acting here. T1 is tension, being force. Here also tension. And let's say this is a tension at distance x here. Even we know already. If I consider this a system, I can find tension very simply. This will become a free board diagram. This is T. This is 12 Newton. One is equal to 12 Newton. Our mass is 6. If I take in one fourth of the length, mass also will become mass will become 1.5 kg. Okay. So I apply this equation. F is equal to ma. Easily calculate tension is equal to 15 Newton. And uh, if we want to understand better, if I do in terms of x also, what I'll find tension will come as a linear function of x. It means tension at this point is uh, 2 Newton, and tension here is 24 Newton. In between, it will vary in a linear fashion. If I draw tension, here it will be 10 Newton, this point. Here it is 24 Newton, and in between, it will vary in a linear fashion. Any point you can know. And knowing how the tension varies along the length becomes useful in some question, especially later on, if we have some complex question where we have to calculate extension of the rod, Young's modulus is given. In this case, the tension is not uniform. We have to calculate extension by the process of integration. We need to know how the tension varies. So this also we what we could have done. Okay, this how it will vary. Okay, so uh, this part I'll stop here. I'll continue with the constraint motion in the next session.